This here is another edition of DNU, and for those of you who are new to my channel, DNU stands for Dumb Negroes United. Today, we will be talking about Shala or Chala Gurma Degu. And the reason why he's going into the DNU files today is because this man was out on bond and then rearrested for raping a woman near Montgomery College in Tacoma Park. Now, this is a local, well, I kind of guess you could say a kind of local story because it is happening in the state that I am in. So, let's get into it. A man out on bond while awaiting trial in two separate criminal cases has been rearrested on allegations that he raped a woman at random in the era, area of the Montgomery College Tacoma Park campus. Around 11.30 a.m. on Tuesday, June 23rd, a woman called 911 to report seeing a different woman being raped alongside the 7600 block of Tacoma Avenue. She described the suspect as a black man in his 20s with a pink fedora hat, blue shirt, and dark jeans. Tacoma Park police saturated the immediate area and quickly spotted a man later identified as Shala Gurma Daegu, aged 25, matching the suspect description. Daegu was walking along the 8,000 block of Georgia Avenue near the CSX subject, at which time the subject made eye contact with this investigator and began to walk away at a very fast pace. A Tacoma Park police detective wrote in court documents obtained by Seven on Your Side. This investigator ordered the subject to stop while identifying myself as a police officer. The subject stops and was detained. The female eyewitness told officers that she observed Daegu standing over the victim with his pants and underwear down. The victim could be heard screaming. The eyewitness stated that she shouted at Daegu to stop, prompting the 5'10", 160-pound man to pull up his pants, approached the witness and claimed she is my girlfriend, and Daegu then fled the area. The victim and eyewitness both positively identified Daegu as the rapist. An ambulance took the victim to a local hospital for a swollen lip, swollen right eye, plus red marks across her chest and neck. A sexual assault exam was also conducted at the hospital. After being driven to the Tacoma Park Police Department for questioning, Daegu reportedly spat in a male officer's face. He also violently swung his body in a way that caused him to fall to the floor. Daegu denied any involvement in the felony rape case, yet detectives note that surveillance video shows otherwise. The defendant could barely, could clearly be seen holding the victim around the neck in a headlock, pinning her against the wall. The defendant then was captured on security video leaving the area pulling up his pants after being approached and scared off by the witness. At the time of his arrest, Daegu told officers he lived in Prog at Progress Place, a homeless shelter located in downtown Silver Spring. Daegu provided authorities with previous addresses in Brooklyn, New York, and Arlington, Virginia. According to court records... My I'm sorry about that. Let me read that part again. According to court records, Montgomery County authorities arrested Daegu twice in February and issued him a civil citation in March. The February 19th and February 26th arrests involved pending criminal charges of second-degree assault, resisting arrest, disorderly conduct, public intoxication, and disturb disturbing the peace. In both instances, the judicial system provided Daegu with a $100 unsecured personal bond. The March 10th civil citation was for possession of an open container of alcohol. Following his June 23rd arrest on charges of first-degree rape and second-degree assault, Montgomery County District Court Judge Rand Gelbert ordered Daegu be held without bond. The 25-year-old accused rapist faces one life term in prison plus 20 additional years. Like, it just seems like this guy just couldn't get his life together at all. Like, look at the charges he had and the fact that he had multiple charges within one month from two separate incidents incidents and it's like they were literally throwing him a lifeline but he just kept messing up like you have to be one major fool to get out on bond and then get rearrested for something completely different and something something as heinous as rape or the attempt the attempting of rape and you know what that witness is very lucky because they said that he approached her and just said something to her and said that was his girlfriend and kept walking because he could have walked up to her and probably tried to rape her or even worse, tried to kill her. So she is very lucky as well. But, you know, the cameras don't lie. And they actually, you know, they got him. And it looks like uh, to me like it could have been a struggle because if you look on his face, 
he has markings underneath his eye and above his eye. So it shows to me that the uh, the victim was trying to fight him off. But yeah, he is extremely dumb for that. Like this guy now is probably has gone to throw his entire life away. Should he be found guilty? And to be quite honest, with all the stuff that they have on him, plus all the additional stuff that before, he's most likely going to be found guilty. Like, damn, you about to go to jail possibly for life unless they can give him a plea deal in which they will probably reduce that sentence. But the fact of the matter is when they throw that first degree on you and they can make it stick, it's a wrap. But this guy right here is definitely worthy of being put on this list because how do you get out of jail and then go and then reoffend? And do something completely different. Like this guy was, it seems like this guy was just born to do just dumb shit. Like for real. Even after he got, what was it, a hundred dollar personal bond? Like that's very rare you get those kind, those kind of bonds nowadays. Like I said, they was throwing him a lifeline in hopes that he wouldn't do it again, but yet here we are. And I think the other thing is that I think he tried to, when he tried to lie about it and even, and everything that the witness described about him, played out exactly how they said on the video against what he was trying to say. So that didn't help his case either. But hey, if he goes to jail for what he did, so be it. I feel absolutely nothing for this guy.